but what do things like ecology have to do with levels of aggression? What does culture have to do with it? What does factors like that? And there's a really interesting array of findings out there. First off, one important dichotomy when looking at traditional human cultures is how people make their living. And the one that's pertinent here is the dichotomy between pastoralist people and everybody else. Pastoralist people, nomadic pastoralist people, these are cow people. These are people who wander around with their goats or their camels. These are the shepherds in contrast to traditional agriculturalists or far rarer, traditional hunter-gatherers. So nomadic pastoralists versus everyone else. And what a boatload of anthropology has shown is nomadic pastoralists have higher rates of violence, both within group and between group. Nomadic pastoralists are vastly more likely than other groups to have standing armies, warrior classes, to have leadership be derived from people who have had the most success as a warrior, to have myths built around their religion, that success in war, violent acclaim in war, is your gateway to heaven or whatever afterlife is viewed as most desirable. This is a consistent finding, lots and lots of these cultures. Nomadic pastoralists are the ones who came up with warfare on a certain level and warrior classes. And this makes perfect sense, because one feature of being a nomadic pastoralist is you're nomadic. At certain times of the year, there's one subset of the whole village who's off 15 miles away where there's some good grazing. Another group is on the other side. And what this sets you up for is something that farmers never have to worry about. Somebody can't come and rustle your farm away at night but people can come and steal all your animals. Warrior classes, so that at any given point, if people are dispersed, there is still a designated age group of individuals who are out there to defend the collective herds of the group. So you see that. In the United States, where that has had an interesting manifestation is where people settled in the original 13 colonies from which part of the United Kingdom. And some very influential sort of studies, really interesting creative ones, pointing out that the American South was disproportionately settled by sheep people from the northern ends of the British Isles. In other words, nomadic pastoralists. Shifting to another realm of anthropological designation, these are people who, who disproportionately have come from cultures of honor. Cultures of honor, where people are willing to kill over very symbolic slights rather than over material conflicts, where there are vendettas within group, there are vendettas between groups, where it is honorific to have to avenge a death, which you do not necessarily find in agriculturalists, cultures of honor. And that freak goes hand in hand with nomadic pastoralism. And what you get there typically are very clear rules about enforced hospitality for guests and very clear rules of the, the circumstances of aggression, retributive ones over symbolic affronts. And that's really clear difference regionally in this country. Interesting sociologist, University of Michigan named Richard Nesbitt. And he grew up in the South, and I actually heard him once give a talk where he talks about how when he was about 18 or so, he left the South for the first time and joined this very strange culture at Harvard University as an undergraduate, and he was dumbfounded by how different of a world this was. People didn't shoot relatives at picnics, at barbecues which sounded totally facetious, but when you look at the higher crime rates in the American South, it is not occurring in urban areas. Urban crime is roughly equivalent in, uh, all throughout the United States. It is not due to higher rates of what they call 7-Eleven robberies, which is just material gain, a robbery of that sort. It is murders of honor. It is people who know each other at social settings, people who have some insult, have something that has nothing to do with material wealth, that this is where the disproportionate violence comes from in the American South. 
And prompted by that, Nesbitt did one of the all-time interesting studies, this famous, amazing study. So he's at the University of Michigan, and he rec recruits volunteers, student volunteers, who believe they're going in to do a, uh, you know, hopscotch test or some such thing, and they're going in, but he made a point of finding out where everyone came from, and he got a fairly even distribution between the relatively few students at Michigan from the American South, and then students from the more traditional North. So they get into the psych building, each individual who's coming for their appointment, and they take the elevator, and they come out, and they walk down the hall. And this is where the experiment happens. Nisbet has somebody working on the project, a confederate on the project, I say, making a lame pun. Okay. <laughs> so, a confederate on the project, person working on the project, and this was a big, beefy guy. And the whole idea was that this big, beefy guy was going to do something insulting to this individual walking down the hallway. All male. Here's what they did. They clearly did a lot of thinking in designing the study in terms of what single word this person was going to say, and this is what he wound up saying. This, the volunteer would be walking down the hall. Here comes this big, beefy guy moving fast, and as he comes by him, bumps into him with his shoulder, walks past and says, watch it, asshole, and then disappears. Volunteer comes in to start their study and quickly they look at blood pressure and heart rate and stress hormone levels and testosterone levels and get a typical participant in this study from the north and they come in and they're a little bit irritated and what a jerk and all of that and it's all over with two minutes later get people from the American South on the average massive stress response, hypertension, elevated testosterone levels, big regional differences. These are some of the physiological pictures of cultures of honor. What else? What other interesting things about ecosystems or ecology or cultural aspects? Another dichotomy that is really consistent, and this one maps pretty readily on that pastoralist versus everybody else, the sorts of cultures and the level of violence that are generated in cultures that live in deserts versus rainforests. And, once again, deserts are where you are far more likely to find nomadic pastoralists, rainforests, hunter-gatherers, mixture of hunter-gatherers, small farm agriculturalists, two totally different worlds of occupations. And what you see is far higher rates of violence within group and between group in desert dwellers. And that maps very logically onto pastoralists versus everybody else. Desert dwellers, open savanna grasslands, that's where you see the warrior classes, that's where you see raiding of other tribes, that's where you get that pattern, virtually none among the hunter-gatherers. I might point out something which will become sort of focused on more in a lecture in about a week or so. Um, I should point out that uh, desert dweller nomadic pastoralists are also the cultures on this planet that invented monotheism. Consistent difference, desert dwellers tend more towards monotheism and it was invented by desert nomadic pastoralists. Rainforest cultures far disproportionately tend to be polytheistic. And this is not remotely surprising. If you're living in a rainforest and there's 10,000 different types of edible plants around there, it doesn't take a lot of work to come up with the notion that there's lots of different spirits and gods out there. What the desert is about is one singular baked tree there of surviving, that's where monotheism was born. Monotheism historically is more associated with cultures that invented warfare and invented warrior classes and raiding and things of that sort. That's kind of interesting. <laughs>